Saturday, and it's time to kick off our experts program on Power Talk Radio. And that means our tech expert, Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, is with us. Hello, Luis. Hello, Mark. How are you? Doing really well. So um, it's going to be another nice weekend, a little bit cloudy around the Central Coast, but we're headed towards May and the warmer weather. Are you guys going to be out on the boat tomorrow? Uh, not this weekend. I have to do a little boat maintenance. So I will be on the boat, but uh, it will stay firmly on the dock as I uh, do a little cleanup work uh, and uh, work on the uh, outboard motor. Every time you take the boat out, there's a, some time that it takes to get it back into shape. So that's what uh, this weekend's all about. Hey, we've got a great story to share with people this weekend. And it's one that comes out of the New York Times. And it has to do with uh, the OnStar program of GMs spying on uh, car buyers. We're going to get to that in a second. But uh, something I wanted to mention from the there's no free lunch department. And if it sounds too good to be true, it is. But I saw something on the next door neighborhood platform the other day, someone was bemoaning the fact that they had lost some money buying supposedly discount tickets to the Monterey Bay Aquarium online through Facebook or an ad on Facebook. And the person said that ticket prices were $9 and they bought like half a dozen or so tickets at that price or paid (laughs) that much money and they didn't get anything. Well, surprise, surprise, there are no $9 tickets to the aquarium. Exactly. (laughs) But the person running the ad, the criminal who uh, had the ad knew enough to know that uh, 1984 to 2024 is the 40th anniversary of the aquarium. So they were advertising it as a 40th anniversary special price. Only problem with that is the aquarium didn't open up till October of 84. So I think if they were going to do any sort of special discount pricing, it would be around the actual anniversary date and not six months earlier. But uh, when you go on the aquarium's website where ticket prices are listed, we see that uh, an adult admission ticket is 60 bucks, a youth is 50, a child's ticket is 45, and a senior citizen ticket is $50. Four and under get in free. There are no $9 tickets to the aquarium. Sorry. Exactly. So you see these ads on Facebook and the price seems too good to be true. It is. And this is just like the $59 Honda generators that the scammers <laughs> yeah. are selling. You can't even tell. I'll tell you what I was just telling my brother-in-law this this morning was that, um, hey, if you take, like, let's see, you buy one of those 2,000 watt generators, you know, and you take it to like a small motor appliance shop to have it serviced. You can't mm-hmm. even get it serviced for $59. So <laughs> why do you think you can buy a new one for that amount? It just, <laughs> yeah, boy, you know, everybody wants something for nothing and um, and they're going to get nothing for something, which is <laughs> the way it works. We always look for deals, right? Yeah. And then uh, when we get bitten, we complain about it. So yeah, buyer but beware. The only way I know of to get into the aquarium for free is to become a volunteer. Yeah, you know, become a docent or a volunteer and you can get in there free. Yeah, put in the hours and, uh, and you'll get a free admission. Anyway, let's move on to this story about how General Motors tricked millions of drivers into being spied on. And uh, the story here is about a, a privacy reporter and her husband that bought a Chevy Bolt recently. And what happened, Lewis? Well, so they bought the Bolt and they went through the process. And this is a person, the uh, writer is somebody who is very diligent about reading all the T's and C's of contracts and she's somebody who is rarely fooled, but she discovered that somehow after they got this car, their information, their driving information was now being sold to LexisNexis Risk Solutions and Veris, two data brokers that work with insurance companies to identify at-risk drivers. So in essence, their driving behavior was being sold to insurance companies. So when they were applying for insurance, it was taking their actual driving record into account. And that surprised them because they had never signed up for this OnStar service that the car had available to them, but that they didn't want. Well, it turns out that when you read the article, the as they dug into it, the dealer actually turned it on automatically and started them in this program called Smart Driver, which is one of the OnStar features, and their information got recorded and sold to LexisNexis, and then eventually it impacted their insurance rates because since they drove so much, their carrier said, hey, no, we're going to increase the uh, premium on your car insurance because you're driving more than normal. And they asked, well, how do you know that? And that's when they found out that tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people are unbeknownst to them being tracked by this service. And their information is being sold to these insurance companies. What was interesting was that the end users, the drivers, got the worst possible version of the smart driver program. They couldn't get insights into their own driving records, but the insurance companies could and then would 
use that information against them. Exactly. And that's actually something that this isn't unique to GM. A lot of cars today, anything that's been manufactured in the last 10, 12 years comes with, most of these cars come with some sort of connectivity option. And a lot of folks don't know that that connectivity option works both ways. Yeah, you can enjoy things like OnStar or Driver Assist or all those kind of services, but it's also a way to track your behavior and track basically your daily driving uh, pattern. And that information could be sold to anybody unless you specifically tell them that they can't do that. Right. And apparently the way the whole thing starts is you're in the process of buying that car. And as the salesman is punching in all sorts of information into the computer, one of the things that he's doing is he's enrolling you in that smart driver program. And this one salesman had told the car buyers that he had enrolled them in the OnStore program, noting that his pay is docked if he fails to do so. He said that it was a mandate from GM, which sends the dealerships a report card each month tracking the percentage of signups. So if you as a salesman are not signing up people for the OnStar program, they're going to red flag you and you're going to get counseled and you could get fired. Yeah. And and that kind of upselling in many industries is typical. You know, even in when you go to hotels and you check in, they're always trying to upgrade you to a, a larger room. And if they, if you agree to do that for a small fee, then uh, that person at the front desk gets uh, gets a little reward. So right. it's not just car dealerships, it's everybody that's uh, doing that uh, upselling. Right. So how do people get around this? How do they defeat this program so that it cannot track them and basically rat them out to their insurance well, companies? The good news is if you're a GM car owner, GM has discontinued selling that information because there are several lawsuits that are working their way through the, the, the court against them. So they've uh, suspended that program. However, that doesn't mean that uh, other manufacturers aren't doing it. So the the best thing you can do is contact your manufacturer or your dealer and ask them if your data is being sold and how you can keep it from happening. Go directly to the manufacturer on their um, website. You can find uh, ways to contact them there. Or if you know the dealer and you have a good relationship with them, go back to them and have them uh, make sure that your information is not being sold. And one of the other things that I read further down in the article, there is an actual OnStar module inside of some other electronic equipment in the car that uh, you could actually yank that thing out of there without affecting how the car operates. Probably want to have a professional do that like at an auto electric shop, but you can defeat it that way, or you can just not buy a new car and just keep your old cars running. Yep. Just be aware that this is happening and uh, that you as a consumer have rights and you should enforce those rights. Yeah. I'm so glad that all of my cars pre-2000, I know they're old, but you know what? They don't. I don't have to worry about this kind of stuff because there isn't anything in any of my cars that will transmit information about me to anyone anywhere. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. there's something Ro- to be Ronnie, said. What's Ronnie say? Because Ronnie's car is a uh, 2001 Beamer, and she does not want to get a new car. She's very happy with the limited technology her car has and the lack of connectivity. <laughs> there she go. thinks it works just fine. <laughs> there you go. All right, Lewis. Thank you so much for that. And uh, folks, if you want to get in touch with Lewis Alvarez or the I team at the Alvarez Technology Group. Find them online at alvareztg.com. The X handle is at Alvarez TG. And Lewis, the toll free number for the I team. Give us a call at 866 78 I team. That's 866 784 8326. And looking ahead to Monday, the Affordable Connectivity Program is running out. The funds for that are running out. We're going to be talking about that on the Monday program. Maybe let folks know a little more about it here. Yeah, this is a program that uh, Congress uh, initiated back in 2021, and it's uh, running out of funds. So it may impact some folks that have been getting subsidies for internet access and starting as soon as May. So uh, tune in to learn more. All right. That's Monday morning starting at 830 right here on Power Talk Radio. Thanks, Lewis. Have a great weekend. You too, my friend.